Buenas, buenas. Welcome to Music Marketing TV. I'm Kevin Ochoa, and today we're going to be taking a look at pattern creation inside Apple Studio and how that leads up to having a full composed track. Now, before we get into opening up every window inside Apple Studio, I want to look, focus on this one. This very simple window called the Channel Rack is what launched FL Studio. 20 years ago, this was all FL was, a simple step sequencer where you can click in, steps, and play back your patterns. That's all it really was. You could load up samples and maybe have one or two synths in there, but that was it. And from there on, FL Studio has created this massive following. Now, what's most amazing is that this channel rack has remade FL Studio's heart and soul since its inception 20 years ago. This is the part of the program that dictates where sounds are routed to in the mixer. So if I open up my mixer, you'll see that the snare is coming to slot four because the channel rack sends it to a certain channel. Now, if I were to change it as I did to channel 10, my instrument is going to be coming out of channel 10. If I move it to channel 13, it's coming out of the channel 13. So this channel rack is what houses all my clips, all my samples, all my MIDI, everything in the channel rack. It's sent from the channel rack to the, the mixer or the playlist. Let me show you guys what the playlist is. It's this little thing over here. So I can simply paste in my patterns inside of the playlist and it will play in the back. If I were to add a clap over here to my pattern, it would also show up in my playlist. That's because this pattern is simply acting as a trigger for the samples that are inside of the channel rack, which are then sending to the mixer out to your master, which are going to your speakers. So these patterns, they don't matter where they are track wise. They could be in track two, three or four or five or whatever. They're still going to play back because all they're really doing is triggering the samples to play back. See how the, my samples don't change mixer outputs? So this is how FL Studio works at its core. Now let's look at why this is an advantage compared to other DWs. So I'm gonna delete all, everything I have inside this playlist and I'm gonna close down this playlist by pressing F12 so I can focus on my channel rack. Now I'm gonna delete these steps by right clicking on them. And I'm gonna add new ones by left clicking. Okay, so now I'm gonna press L to switch back to pattern mode, and now I'm gonna make a sequence within 10 seconds. All right, it was that simple to make a beat inside of a studio. Now I'm gonna take you guys to Studio One Three, which is it, the other DAW I'm gonna be using as an example. Now, I'm not trying to rip on Studio One by any means. I'm just trying to show you guys the differences between what is a uh, traditional DAW, which would be Studio One, and FL Studio, which is a sequence based DAW. I'm gonna come back into FL Studio in a second. But for now, let's zoom into our, our view right here. Please note that I copied every single instrument back into Studio One. All right, so let's try to copy the sequence I made inside of a studio in Studio One. I'm gonna make a loop marker and let's try to go for this. All right, so you see how much longer it took? It took probably like at least 20 seconds more, or it felt like 20 seconds more. And it didn't feel as fluid. Whereas with FL Studio, I can actually open up my browser. And if I go to my, my samples, I'm gonna go to packs, drums. Let's say I wanna replace that clap, percussion, clap. Let's say I'm, I wanna replace this clap live when I'm, when I'm playing this back. I 
I can just go ahead and swap samples out. Let's replace that, the hi-hat with the tambourine. And how about we replace the, and how about we replace the, the snare with something like this. So you guys see how easy it is to mess around with the sequencer and just groove along with it and just sample things in and out of it, just drag and drop samples in it. It's so simple. Adding instruments is the same way. I can just go to my plugin database, go to generators, and let's go to synth classic and load up a toxic biohazard. I can just drag and drop in here and boom, I have a pretty sweet synthesizer. All right, cool. And then from this channel rack, I can simply right click, go to my piano roll and start adding notes in here. So bring it down low. So you see how quickly you can sequence sounds in here. It's just amazing. And let's say I want to actually start putting this into an actual playlist to arrange it. I can open up my, my playlist right here. And let me open up my mixer just so I can get a view of that too. I can paste this pattern in. Let's play this back. And now I can right click on this pattern picker up here and select split by channel. And now all my instruments are in their own little pattern. Amazing. So now I can select, hey, I want the kick to come in at bar five. And let me brush it in for the rest of the bars. And let's say I want my clap to be there from the beginning. Brush it in. Let's say the same thing with the open hi hat from the beginning. And I wanted the clap to start a little bit later on. So let's put in at bar nine. And I want the bass to be playing the whole time as well. I can select this whole range and copy it over here. So this is how easy it is to start making songs inside of a studio. I can simply use a channel rack as a step sequencer for my drums, and then I can add uh, instruments to it, such as a bass line, or, and sequence them via MIDI, put them inside of the playlist, arrange them in just a few seconds, and have them start playing back through any of the mixture slots I give it. So it's super easy to use this program. I encourage you guys to give it a try. If you guys have never used it before, there's a free trial, and it's unlimited. This is a caveat. Whenever you save a project, you can't open it back up until you buy a license, but you get the full fledged software. So you get access to all the synthesizers inside of studio, even the special ones like Harmer, which are fantastic. And we'll definitely do more videos on Harmer, but I want to call it a day. And I want to thank you guys for being here with us at Music Marketing TV. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give us a like. And if you want to see more educational music production and audio production content, make sure you subscribe and Make sure to ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. I'm Kevin Ochoa with Music Marketing TV, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.